Okay, our next example really just starts with a uh, preliminary remark in that this, uh, I believe, is in the homework. Something like the square root of 1 plus the square root of x like that, all over the square root of x like that, and dx like that. Um, we can actually do that one by guess and check. Well, that's not the one we're going to do here. We're going to do one that looks simpler. The one we're going to do is going to look like integral and I want the square root of 1 plus square root of x dx. Um, we can't do this one by guess and check. <laughs> um, the reason being, by the way, is that the inside function, the blob, would be 1 plus square root of x. The derivative of the blob would be 1 over 2 square root x, and there's nothing like that here. So guess and check won't work. Substitution will, though. So what I'm going to do is walk over here, move this up a little bit without it killing anything. Let's just see. I'd like to use as much of this board as I possibly can get. Let's see here, over here. Right, um, I'm going to put a little x right about there. That's going to be x land. Hopefully that's going to give me enough room to actually do this. Remember, this is going to be our workspace. This is the only place where we can actually write w's and x's together. And down here, this is going to be w land, where hopefully we get an integral in the end um, that we can do. Now, how do we start? Um, how did we start by guess and check? We looked for a blob, and that's actually always the right thing to do first. So I'm going to write down w equals 1 plus square root x. As I mentioned, when substitution is necessary, solving for x is also usually pretty necessary. So I'm going to uh, subtract 1 from both sides, like that. And then I'm going to square both sides. So I get w minus 1 quantity squared equals x. All right, here we go. Um, I now go over to W land, and I draw my integral far, far away. That's great. Wherever I saw a 1 plus square root of x on the inside, I'm now supposed to put a w. So the, this just got a lot cleaner to look at. I'm very happy about that. Next thing we're supposed to do is just circle what's left to translate. Remember, we've already translated the integral. We've already translated the square root of 1 plus square root of x. I need a dx. Now, strangely enough, we're in the middle of an antiderivative problem, but in order to find dx, I have to take the derivative. Um, now, we have two choices, or three. I can either take the derivative of this first one, which is really, really ugly, or I can take the derivative of this one over here, which is much prettier. We are still taking the derivative with respect to x. So, here we go. The derivative of the left-hand side with respect to x, that's blob squared. Here we go. So, I'm going to get 2 times blob times the derivative of blob with respect to x. That's going to be dw dx, like that. Um, the derivative of the 1 is just 0, so I'm good with that like that. I'm going to go like that. Um, now what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to solve for dx. Um, I'm running out of space there, so what I'm going to do is just put what dx is in here. right? If I multiply both sides by dx here, I guess I'll just do this. don't like doing this, but space kills me. I said the, the dx just looks like 2 times w minus 1 times dw, right? That says wherever I see a dx in x land, I can put 2 times w minus 1 times dw over in w land, and I'm just going to put that right here. 2, I guess I don't need that much space, times w minus 1 dw, like that. Now again, we have a brand new integral. Um, this doesn't match my derivative table. Uh, I really can't do that by guess and check. I can uh, distribute like we did before. So I'm going to distribute. Let's see here. And the 2 is still on the outside. I haven't done the integral yet. Uh, that's w to the 1 half times w. That's w to the 3 halves. Minus w to the 1 half. Like that. Ta-da. 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 Like that. Let's see here, and I want to do this integral. I'm going to erase my little w over here so I have a little more space. The 2 goes along for the ride. It works with derivatives, works with antiderivatives. I want the antiderivative of w to the 3 halves. Well, it's a power function. I raise the power to 5 halves. I divide by 5 halves. Um, I will usually write this as 2 to the fi 2 fifths times w to the 5 halves. You can see that when I take the derivative of that, I do get my w to the minus w to the 3 halves, sorry. I take w to the 1 half, I raise the power by 1. I know that's going to be w to the 3 halves. I'm next supposed to divide by 3 halves, but I multiply by 2 thirds instead. It's 
more space. I like it. Now, um, we turn it into an antiderivative we could do. We have an answer, but our answer is w's, and the original thing said, find all functions whose derivative has x's in them. So what I would need to do is walk back through the work land that turns w's into x's, and just write the whole thing out. So what I'm going to write out is four fifths, if I can write this out, times w, that's one plus square root x to the five halves, like that and then minus four thirds, like that. I want one plus square root x to the three halves plus c. And you can see, by the way, a very nice demonstration that this would be a terrible thing for guess and check. How in the world are you supposed to guess at something like that? All right, second example done.